Hello everyone, welcome back to OCD Recovery's YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about why thoughts or thoughts doesn't quite cut it for chronic OCD. You know, an example that's someone that we see all the time. You know, they're absolutely convinced that they're a serial killer, they have harm OCD, severe POCD, uh, homosexual OCD, maybe because they live in a culture where it's very, you know, still frowned upon. Again, we're not talking about whether I believe it's, you know, it's a bad thing, I'm just talking about in the context of the fear. And then, you know, people say to me, well, Nick, we hear you guys talk about, you know, my the person I'm working with, doesn't matter if it's a coach, a therapist, or a friend giving you advice, isn't saying to me directly thoughts or thoughts, but they are. So let me break that down because this is a huge misconception. Let's say you have harm OCD and you're absolutely afraid you're a serial killer. And the person that you're working with is telling you that you're not a bad person, that you would never do that. They are telling you that you would, when they say to you, you would never do that. They are saying you are not your thoughts, i.e. thoughts are thoughts. So it, People think that the person is saying to you directly that thoughts are thoughts. That's not what they're saying at all. They're saying stuff in a reassurance manner that you would never do that, which is a huge reassurance statement. Uh, you're not a bad person, which is a huge reassurance statement for, say, POCD, harm OCD. Anyone that has a severe OCD fear that's based off not being able to accept themselves. So that's really the big problem. So it doesn't have to present with thoughts or thoughts, but it can present in the way where people are telling you that you're not a bad person, that you would never do that and so forth. So it's not as simple as most people make it out to be. And that's super important to talk about. Now, the reason why thoughts or thoughts doesn't work for chronic OCD and the way that people think is because it doesn't create any framework for robust recovery just in case something happens in real life. What happens if you're driving down the road, someone cuts out in front of you, you flip your car and your child in your car, your child dies in the car. This stuff happens. Rare, but it, it does happen. Now that event has become a real event. And if you're just going with thoughts or thoughts, which is really more of a coasting I don't see personally how thoughts or thoughts can produce any sort of robust recovery under acceptance. I don't see how I would have been able to recover completely from sensory motor OCD, going from a mental hospital to being completely stuck for over a year and a half with chronic sensations, full anxiety blasting all the time to where I am now where it's like I never even had it. Because the fear has nowhere to latch because I have unconditional life acceptance and, and decent unconditional self-acceptance. Nowhere near life acceptance. Because unconditional self-acceptance, in my opinion, is the hardest for people to grasp because we're so conditioned to thinking with conditional self-acceptance. I think it's a little bit easier to grasp unconditional life acceptance. But there is layover. But anyway, so that's really one of the main reasons why thoughts or thoughts really can't cut it. You know, again, the harm OCD is the best one. And the, the POCD. Say you have a POCD fear and someone you're working with is telling you, oh my gosh, you would never do that. You're the least likely person to do that. They are telling you that thoughts are thoughts. That is exactly what they're telling you. Now, it's very hard to see this and understand this without suffering from OCD and coming out the other side. Because... I always use the example of a waterfall. When you go into a spa, there's a waterfall. And the top part where the water is actually not in the back, hitting the rocks on the way down, that superficial front part is what's easy for most people to grasp. Oh, you're flicking a light switch with magical thinking. Oh, you're washing your hands, contamination OCD. The further you go back into the waterfall, the harder it is to actually understand and to see what people are actually talking about. When people say to me, these certain um, you know, in, internal ruminations, they're like, no one seems to understand me. I say, well, it's hard to understand that because it's not easy to see. And unless someone's really experienced that, it's not the easiest thing to understand. There's, there are people out there that have never had OCD that have a damn good knowledge on OCD. But for the most part, it is hard to understand why truly Thoughts or thoughts doesn't work in the way that people say. And I want to cover this one more time because it is important. And your questions make sense. People say to me, again, Nick, no one is telling me that thoughts are thoughts. I don't even know what you're talking about. No one says that. You are completely right. That verbiage is what they're not using. But are they telling you that you're not, that you're a good person? Are they telling you that you're not a bad person? Are they telling you you're the least likely person to do that? Are you telling you your thoughts are not real and to distinguish between an OCD thought and a real thought? If they're saying those four things to you or a combination of them, they are telling you thoughts are thoughts. They are telling you that you could just 
allow it to be there and go with mindfulness. And mindfulness can have some benefits, but mindfulness can have some severe detriments with OCD recovery when you're using it to chase this feeling of mindfulness, this, this feeling of disconnection from your thoughts. That's not acceptance. That's not acceptance of the presence of your thoughts. So I hope this video cleared up some stuff. Definitely comment down below what you think about this. It's a super important topic. It's a misunderstood topic. And again, it, it's true. People are not saying thoughts are thoughts. Some people are, but they're saying it in different ways. And the number one way, I'll say it for the third time, because it is important to hear this, is you're the least likely person to do that and you're a good person. That is thoughts are thoughts. You are not your thoughts. And you are not your thoughts is 100% thoughts are thoughts. That's a kind of a tongue twister in a little bit. So again, like, subscribe, please share this video with other people who suffer from anxiety because this is the same thing for GAD, um, PTSD, panic disorder. It's the same thing. If you have panic disorder and you're absolutely afraid that you're going to have panic disorder forever, you can't just go with, you know, oh, it's not that bad and stuff like that. You have to break down the worst case scenario. You have to go into the context of the thought for some fears. And when I mean some fears... People with chronic severely lashed fears that have not been able to move forward with uncertainty is an important aspect. Have been able to move forward with exposures will more than likely have to go into the context of the thought. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. Again, please share the video. This is a super important topic. I'm going to tell you something right now. I know plenty of people that use those things. You know, the thoughts are thoughts or strictly mindfulness and they get results but they're doing a lot of coasting and they're not actually getting better in the long term. I have never used any of those approaches and I reached 100% full recovery. Does that make me special? No. Do I have a unique insight into why thoughts are thoughts usually doesn't work? I 100% do. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. Have a great day.